Paradni Duff will win the lead here, and it was two straight games. Had to play against Japanese pair yesterday, Aratama and Taruno. Well, it was two games for the Chinese youngsters. For the Danes, very much taller than their opponents and older as well. 27 and as I say 30 today the left hander looking at the women's doubles draw all three Chinese pairs in the quarterfinal stage two Japanese two Indonesian and one Dane so this obviously from the bottom half of the draw with the number two seeds seeds currently number two in the world and as for this young Chinese pair well on me I think we've got that round the wrong way Dong Ni is on the right as we look at them and she's 20 years of age Tang Yuan Ting is 19 up 10 places in the world ranking up to 52 but they've only played five events don't get a realistic ranking until you've played 10 events. Well, there's confirming what I was telling you. All of their matches in two straight games, not played against another seeded pair. Not playing against a seeded pair again today in the semi final. Well, they've played each other once previously. That was in the quarter-final of the Japan Super Series in Tokyo in September. It was a close game. As you can see, the Danes won on that occasion. They eventually lost in the final to the Danish pair in Tokyo. So, as I was saying, Kelly Hall from Australia and Chris Yip from Hong Kong court officials for this one well for the young Chinese pair only five tournaments played having formed their partnership earlier this year and they've already won two titles the New Zealand International and the East Asian Games East Asian Games of course in Tianjin Dongni was World Junior Champion in 2010 when the event was staged in Guadalajara in Mexico. Won the gold medal playing with Bao Yi Sin, who was part of the partnership that knocked out the world champions yesterday. For the left-handed Dane, she's a former world champion in mixed doubles. There she is, birthday girl. 30, the big 3-0. Oh. I can hardly remember what it was like to be 30. On my left, Christina Pedersen, Camilla Ritterjul. So, Christina Pedersen, the 27-year-old from Warburg in Denmark, getting the semi-final underway. Of course, she's a former champion here in the mixed doubles discipline. 2010, she won the title with your competition, Nelson. One love. That was beaten finalist in the mixed doubles a year later. So, two previous finals. For her partner, she's looking for her first 
final here in Hong Kong. Oh, and that's well taken. Two World Championship medals, bronze medals for Peterson. One in the mixed doubles, one in the women's doubles. Different years, of course. Now, when these two pairs played each other in Tokyo, I was noticing the number of times that the Danes were caught off guard when the Chinese players Get a punch clear down the centre of the court, especially when both the Danes were, in essence, having to play the round the head shot, so in the formation they are at the moment. And the left hander in the left quarters, they play. The Danes very much like to play an aggressive sort of game. Both very good net players. They have to be to be a good mixed doubles player, and given their success, both of them in mixed doubles. Not surprising they like to come forward as much as possible in the women's doubles. They're both tall, strong athletes, so not afraid to, to shuffle a bit of a thump from the back of the court. Peterson is 178, that's 5 foot 10. Five, uh, Rui is 183, that's, that's about 6 foot. It's the Danes who have done all the attacking so far, as I would have expected. No, no. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's just wide. Crikey. That would have been the shot of the tournament had that landed in. Sudden. And the Danes 
been asked a lot of questions in their defence. Good to see the Chinese pair being a little more aggressive. Doesn't need to be all power smashes, but you need to be hitting the shuttle in a downward direction. You need to be commanding the net. of Christina Peterson yesterday and indeed in the mixed doubles final last week in China does tend to be very committed one side or the other so if you can smash across her body she does struggle as indeed she did in that last rally again this is one of six straight points by the Chinese combination from two six adrift now leading by two points lifting shots most reliable shots I that again wasn't entirely convinced. of the last 10 points going in favour of this pair from China. They have two six deficit to an 11-7 lead at the mid-game interval. Yu Yong in the black shirt there, the Chinese coach, former world champion. Mixed doubles champion with Gur Fei back in 1997, I think it was, in Glasgow. 20 seconds, 20 seconds. Coach. Oh, the momentum very much with the Chinese youngsters. They're eager to get on with the match. Dane's taking all of their allotted time. Understandably so. Zua has said to his players, the Danish coach. Let's see if we see a change in tactics. Oh. Certainly more aggressive in that rally than so indeed they were in the beginning Eight. of the game. Maybe a little look behind from Tang. Would that have gone long? Mm, I think it might have done.
close to that back line, but of course, the Danes are playing hey. with the drift at the moment, so it's more liable to go long. Through their lifts or drives. now 12 of the last 14 points that the youngsters have won. wanting on her defence once again, Peterson. Oh, service fault called. Bracket not facing in a downward direction, says the service judge. Chris Ip. assisting with playing to the back of the court. It's not their style. And it's extremely difficult given the drift in this arena. Chinese pair want to change the shuttle. Danes say no. Umpire demands to see the shuttle and says it looks fine. if they want to win this match. Right to go for it, though, I think. are plenty. That one wasn't all powerful. What? Just clipping the shuttle down, that's all that's needed. In fact, the variation in pace, some powerful ones, some drop shots, some clip downs like that, probably a jolly good thing. Error. And 
between Udong Lee and Tang Huan Ting. Just 15 minutes. Number two seeds from Denmark are in trouble. time. So what can the number two seeds do in response? Certainly not helping their cause. Error on the return of serve. Oh. Yeah, that's the sort of rally that I believe they should be playing the whole time. Of course. A lot of it depends on what Chinese players do in response. Not quite sure why she's flicked serving so much. And an error on her low serve in the first game, and I don't know whether she's lost confidence. to see the Danes using more channel attack instead of you could see in that rally one smash to one player then a smash to the other I'd like to see more smashes from the European champions going down the center of the court and therefore narrowing the angle of reply and then you've got a better chance of getting your net player to intercept the return just like that because I don't see that they're going to win rallies from power play from the back. I think they're going to have to win points by finishing it off from the net. And therefore, you've got to involve the net player first and foremost. Big sigh of disappointment. Oh, that's good to find. 
Let's stick with it, though. Problem that was exposed at the Japan Open. A lift, flattish lift or clear down the centre of the court. Neither of the Danes responding to it. A quick conference there on tactics and what they need to be doing. down the centre there it is and again then you've got your net player involved of knowing that the Chinese players are so good in their defensive play it's going to take five or six attacking shots at least before you can get through change on the low serve there instead of serving towards the tee the center of the court serving out wide that's good variation It's got away with it.
great return of serve. I so often talk about the serve return and third shot, so important in doubles, sets the tone for the rally. attacking shots to actually get the shuttle down. That's when you needed to play the little block there. You could see how deep both the Chinese players were in their defensive stance. So when you've got to vary the pace. Throw in the little block. first. referee having a word with Marzua. Not sure what that was about. I think it may have been because Camilla Ruta Yule was putting her foot on the advertising boards around doing her shoelace up, maybe even stretching. It's a little harsh. intriguing battle. Look at that loose grip. It's lovely. No! Oh, kiss of death when I say that. down the middle again, where they struggle, the names. Oh, a great example of channel attack there from the Chinese pair, involving the net player. serve. Well, the Danes go into the lead. 2-7 down they were at one stage. Oh, I wonder if they 
have been told by coach they blocks to the net or drop shots to the center yeah I suspect and years to become so astute on court that sensing of where the gaps are few rallies. Very important passage of play. Net player involved, the change of pace. Those sort of errors at this stage of the match. Ever super series final, it would be. Oh, brilliant! Oh, Dongni wasn't intimidated by the tall Camilla Ruta Yul hitting the smash and following forward five straight points and now five match point opportunities. It's 
going wide. Oh. Well, Camilla Ruta Yule kicks her racket to the side. Chinese pair thank their coaches first. And as I've already commented earlier today, I'm not sure that's entirely appropriate. You should always thank opponents first. 21-13, 21-15 in 37 minutes. And a great finish to that second game by the Chinese pair. Obvious disappointment for the Danes. And not the way for Camilla Rutiul to celebrate her 30th birthday. Standings. Well, the number one pair on the list there. Lost in the very first round here. But there you can see that Chris Adcock and Kim and Kim at 9 and 10. Adcock and Ellis, of course. And they are contesting this semi final. I can tell you that Kim and Kim have already leapfrogged up six places by virtue of their semi final here. So they've already overtaken. Matthias Bo and Karsten Mogensen and the two Malaysian pairs. The big question is if Chris Adcock and Andy Ellis can get enough points to qualify for the Super Series finals. Well, I've just had confirmation from the BWF because we saw that Super Series list and we saw at number four, Go Sung Hyung and Lee Yong Day. Now they are a dissolved partnership. And I did wonder whether the English pair, if they were to be runners up here, then they would be ranked, in, that's in the whole tournament here, then they would be ranked number nine. And I wondered whether the dissolved partnership of Go Sung Hyung and Lee Yong Day, if they were not going to play, pair would of course qualify. Now I've just had it confirmed by the BWF that the Korean pair, despite the fact that they've dissolved their partnership, must play in the Super Series finals. And if not, they will be fined. So here the other Korean pair on that list. Now they've definitely qualified been out of a qualifying position after the China Open. Now, by virtue of at least their semi-final here, they will be at least number six. In fact, I believe they will be number six on the list. So they will qualify for the Super Series finals. Now, given what the BWF have just confirmed to me, it looks, assuming that the other Korean pair of Go Sung Hyung and Lee Yong Day. Assuming they play, then I don't think that it's possible for the English pair to qualify for the Super Series finals, even if they won the whole tournament.